How you doing? Listen, I'm living my best life. I had to wait and get me. I had to run downstairs real quick so I could get me a glass of um cranberry juice. <laughs> you know, so sorry that I'm two minutes, you know, two no. minutes late. But I don't feel like that's too bad. Hey, no. I see my friends in the chat. Hey, Marquis. Yes. Hey, Marquis. Hey, Jordan. Hey, Jules. Uh -huh. James, how's it going, guys? I don't know. I got some friends up in here. Yeah, this is cute, right? Very. Yeah, I like so, what you got going on in your back wall. I wish I, I wish I had some shit in my ambiance. Oh, that's my um, that's my old vision board. I I keep them up. Um, cute. This is the one from um when I turned twenty five. I do one every every five years. It's like a big, big thing. Yeah. You know what? I do something similar, but I do it every seven years because every seven uh -oh. years you go through a life change. That's seven, true. 14, 21, 28, 35. You know, yes. I feel like I hit my 28 one like five years in a row, but who kept who counting? Yes, yes. Love it. Love to see it. Todd is in the building. Hey, Todd. Hey. But welcome everyone. If you guys, um, if you guys have, uh, have seen, um, we're starting what's called the neighborhood chat. We are just going to, you know, talk to some friends for a few minutes, check on them, see how they're doing. This is a weird time for everyone. Uh, so we just want to make sure that we're all good, including all the folks that are following. If you guys have questions f um, for Queen Joe or, or myself, I mean, I like being the Oprah of the day. But, I mean, if you have questions for any of us, we're, we're open. Oh, hey, Ava. Hey, boo. Um, yeah, so, you know, we'll be here. So... You know, the first question I have for the Queen Joe is, how are you doing? Like, because it's just such a weird time. Let me tell you something. The first, the first week of the quarantine, on day three, you can ask my girlfriend. I was like, I'm depressed. I need to get out. <laughs> like, it was real. It was so bad. It was so bad. Because I'm not a homebody anyway, so I'm always out. Right. Um, so I was depressed like the like the third day, but then my friend, shout out to um Sean Smith. He I was talking to him about how bored I was. And you know how whenever people that's like extra Christian, they always make you feel like things could be worse. Yeah. So he was on so he was on my phone like, Don't go outside. I was like, You don't know how it is. I'm always out, blah blah. He was like, How do you know God doesn't want you to spend this time with him? This is mm -hmm. a and I was just like he just broke me down for a while. So I was like, Fine, suck it up. So, but then after that, he must have been right because that's when everybody started doing like, you know, the live um, talent shows or whatever. Yeah. And so I just started joining anybody and everybody live. And it's it's been crazy. If, if, if there's any artists in here, make sure y'all follow like for different producers, different people and just jump on their lives because I got 120 followers in like the first five days. And it just oh. like... Yeah, and it keeps going. So it's just like, as shitty as it is, I never used to use live before. I don't market right. like that. You know what I'm saying? Or at least I always marketed it in person. That's the one thing that I think that I think that that myself, and maybe, I don't know, I would assume that maybe for you too, like when you're out and about as much as we are, a lot of our followers increase from, you know, person to person contact because That's you're true. always mm -hmm. out. Right. Um, so to learn how to use social media in that way is like new for me. Yeah. Anyway, so now that I feel like I got somewhat of the hang of it, I'm living my fucking best life. I go on other people. I go over people's Instagram parties and stuff. So I'm communicating with people more than I ever thought that I would. It's not conventional, but you know. But other than that, I still got my job. I don't know how. Thank like Jesus for that. Oh yes, Amen. Okay, thank. Come like on, Jesus. job. Yes. All right. Like, yeah, I'm doing well. What about you? Listen, it's, um, it's, again, it's been also really, really, really strange for me. You know, I'm used to be about, I'm used to being about the town. Yes. I know, but, you know, and I miss seeing my friends. I miss seeing y'all and, you know, going to, you know, hearing music live and whatnot. But, I mean, I think this is God telling us all that we need to, you know, innovate and, and Absolutely. start a new. Uh, I don't want to say start something new, but I think we all have we all have to, you know, rebirth 
in some way, you know what I mean? So um, I've been using the time um, for that. I mean, this is a big step because, you know, I, I, you know, I used to do interviews in the past, but it just got too much. So, but I, I, I realized that I lost that intimacy to be able to get with artists. I'm um, right. doing interviews. Yeah, you know, I see people, I say hi, but it's a little different than when um, I get to sit down with them one on one and we have like an honest conversation. You know. Right. No, I, I, I know. You and I, we have, <clears throat> we have two AM conversations and in, in, yes. in cars after yes. several glasses of whatever I had. <laughs> Real. Yes, but I mean, you know, but. I we had those conversations because you just and I don't and I, I've, I've told you I don't think you get the credit that you deserve as being such an integral piece of the Philly nightlife scene. But I mean, you know, you are at all the events. If and if you're not there as an attendee, you're working, and it's usually that you're working there. So, what have you learned about Philly's nightlife scene over these past what ten, fifteen years or so? Right. Um... <clears throat> Well, I'm going to go a little bit, <clears throat> if you don't mind, I'm going to go like a little bit as far as like a, a little journey. Yeah. So a lot of people know me from different events and from different times and different places. And mm -hmm. um, But the people who just met me don't necessarily know my start. So <clears throat> as far as uh, party scenes go, I went to Temple and... A lot of the party, actually, you know, a lot of the party scene that I've ever gotten into is literally because of the people that I dated. It started off that way. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when I was younger, I dated battle rappers, which is, you know, I'm from Philly. Yeah. So I was at house parties all the time. We worked the door of house parties all the time. When I went to Temple, uh, you know, dated more people. I became part of uh, when when Damage first started. Damage and Classic used to have parties. Uh, I can tell you, like before, there was nobody that was coming to any of their events because yeah. you know we're talking like we're like freshmen and everybody else is senior and everybody you know knows everybody. So a lot of it was all right. While I'm in class, I'm going to you know, flirt with these people, talk to these people, blah, 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 and make everybody come to the party. Yes. And it worked. It made people come to the party. And then I had girlfriends, and then we would dress alike, and then we would dress crazy, and everybody would come to the parties. Mm -hmm. And then um, after that, it was another girl who became, like, the head of the state with Vixens, and they, like, went off with that party. But after a while, what I noticed at that time is when bottle service and stuff started to pick up, that was not me. Like, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, I'm like I'm a Philly girl through and through. Like, I'm used to house parties. I like to be able to go up to people and talk to them and actually dance. You right. know what I mean? And, and to be honest, after a while, I got tired of spending $50 at Bare Feet, okay, trying to get me a different freakum dress every week, <laughs> okay, knowing that I was never going to wear it again. Right. I, wanted, I wanted to be able to wear jeans or whatever else I wanted to wear. So at the time, I was working at Urban Outfitters, and I was dating a dancer who was um, really close with, you know, Matt, who's like mm -hmm. my brother, like mm -hmm. really close with Matt. And he was like, "You should come to this party called Super Dope." So we go to, so we go to Super Dope, and say, honestly, the same repeat situation happened. I go to Super Dope. There are literally five people there, including me. I am one of the five. Yeah. And <clears throat> although me and this dancer broke up, me and Matt were just really cool. And so I was like, <laughs> you know what? I'm going to do the same shit that I did with the damage shit, but I'm going to do this. I'm going to do it the same way. Mm -hmm. Now, luckily, I went to Temple. There was another boy named Brian who went to Temple. And there was a boy named Gene who was like a model or something like that. And it was Moses. So, like, we were, like, a little team, and I went to school for journalism, but I took marketing and stuff. So, I was telling Matt, I was like, yo, let me do the marketing for this party. So, he would be like, okay. And he was the only person I know who, I know who would help me think or, or who would execute the crazy ideas I had. Uh -huh. So, one of the crazy ideas I had was posting or at least taping all of our uh, super dope posters on the back of SEPTA buses so that they would ride through the city. 
Wow. So when you wait and step, like wait at the bus stop, I don't know if people could do that shit now, or even if it would matter now, but we would wait on the corner of like on different corners downtown, wait for the bus to come. One more person would distract the person in front while the other one would tape it to the bus. Uh -huh. So we would tape it to the bus. We would do little ideas like make it look like a parking ticket. But when you open up the envelope, it's like, hey, you just got free entry to Superdome. That's cute. So, so that is hell though too seeing that damn thing on my car though it, listen people it, you know what it's always it was fun to watch reactions only because people would start off being so mad mm -hmm. you know what i mean and then well at least my idea was that people would start off being mad and then they opened it and they'd be like you know whatever right. but at the time we just ended up being really fortunate because i worked at urban outfitters at that time black people ran walnut street you had yeah. all the black guys at ubic you had yeah. all the black girls at Urban Outfitters, and then you had the black girls at Zara. So right. Superdope was on a Wednesday. And we I had friends, had, had friends working at Steve Madden at that time. Hello, right. ran Walnut Street. So what would happen was we were in college, so we could be out all night. Uh huh. So I would literally do the same shit, round all the girls that I know. And at the time, we had this girl crew. It was called Slut Tights. Shout out to my slut, <laughs> to my slut type crew. And that was like me, <laughs> Tiff Green, um, Ebony, Mego. I don't know if you know Mego, but like, yeah, we would do that. And then Animal House came too, and like the same thing. So when you have a bunch of girls, they bring a bunch of guys who brings a bunch of girls who brings right. a bunch of guys. Mm -hmm. um, and it went really well. And then after that, uh, Matt, I guess, considered me to be somewhat valuable and just continue to try different ways for me to um, make money. And after that, uh, people just, and, but another thing is like, if you're going to, this is what I tell anybody who wants to start a party, start a party, you have to go to them. You cannot just do your own thing and expect everybody to show up to your shit. You can't yeah. do that. Yeah. If you want people to come to your stuff, you have to support other people. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like this it's it's called a scene for, for a reason. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like so not only the one thing that I feel like has allowed me to last in the party industry as long as I have is because I support other people. When yeah. you support other people, they come and they support you. If you if one person says you're trustworthy, then they'll vouch for you for somebody else. Mm -hmm. Just always be in clutch like that because people will call me last minute for anything. When I worked for Ilvibe, the person who was supposed to be booking the talent, I don't know what happened, but it was just a bunch of people who ended up um, dropping the ball. And yeah. I have no idea who the I'm not gonna I who Talib Kweli's manager was, mm -hmm. how like how to get in contact with them or whatever. But at the time, I was just like, we're in a bond. Like this is like like we're supposed to put on a show in two weeks. We're supposed to get a guest, okay? And Red Bull is putting out eight grand for us to do this. Yeah, yeah. So like, what are we gonna do? And. A lot of people, you know, when they get in panic mode, they start to think smaller instead of sticking with the original idea. Mm -hmm. I'm the type of person where it's like, there's one degree of separation between so many different people. Just keep like pushing and pushing and pushing. Like, okay, we can't find a hotel room. That's cool. Who do I know that works in a hotel? How this deal? We yeah. ended up doing um, Talib Kweli at the Blockly, and there was no liquor in the green room. Mm. so I was like you know what I used to go to my friend's party that was over at uh what's that little bar that's next to electric I can't I can't think of it, what that was but yeah, we, I, I would go over there and they would sell bottles of liquor so it was 10 o'clock at night all the liquor stores was closed and we needed liquor for the green room yeah. so I called Dice at the time and was like, Dice, I need you to talk to these people to see if we can buy bottles off of their shelves to bring to the Blockly so that we can stock up Talib Kweli's green. Wow. Uh -huh. So I did that. I also stepped in and started. Um, it was called Lollies. Hey, Fred. Oh, okay. okay, I couldn't remember what it was called. <laughs> then I um I went to, so got the green room. Then I ended up doing stage, manage stage management that night because a bunch of people started just throwing jackets everywhere and yeah. just being out of control. And Lee Jones saw that. And he was just like, yo, 
I know you're working with Ilva, but if there's a way that you could work with the Sunday party, like I'm, I'm, I'm buying for you. Like how you, how do we get you on a team? Mm -hmm. And just so many situations, um, like that has happened for me. It's just seeing where something needs to be filled and just like just doing it. Yeah. But we'll come around and appreciate you for it later. What do you think? Um, like the the essence of a Philadelphia nightlife scene? Like, what are the the things that differentiate Philly from other markets? I think um, it's so funny that you asked me this because I feel like I answered the same way and this is the shit that get people mad, but I don't care. Mm -hmm. It does not matter how many fucking transplants come to this city. And I don't mean transplants in a bad way. Mm -hmm. I mean, many outsiders come to this city. It's going to be a wild before the city is white collar completely yeah mm -hmm. the people who are going out are still blue collar yeah. they don't necessarily have to be you know what i mean warehouse workers i'm just saying like the mindset in general mm -hmm. the people here are not pretentious yeah. they don't give a, they're not they're not impressed because you're like oh i i work for diddy's son's manager black People here are like so. I don't. I don't. They don't. They don't care like that. Yeah. It's, people aren't pretentious. So when, <clears throat> so when you go to places like New York, right, and everybody's dialed up, and then there's these heaters on the outside, and people are like, "Oh, you have to have the look to get in," and blah blah blah. And I'm not saying they don't have places that try that here. They do have places that try that, mm -hmm. and they don't last. Right. Like, yeah. And, yeah. Like, and there's a reason why they don't last mm -hmm. because we as a people are still we're still very blue collar in the mind we're yeah. not pretentious we we trust you when we know you or we know somebody who knows you mm -hmm. and we like to go places where we could feel comfortable that's just that's what i think is different even different from going to parties in la mm -hmm. different from going to parties in atlanta like that's what I think separates us the most. And another thing is, I think people in Philly, as far as the nightlife scene goes, is trying to figure out how to get a bang for their buck. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's even the ones that do service because if because the people who do do bottle service in Philly, they they will try to hustle you down. You could say, all right, we'll do you know one hundred and fifty dollars a bottle for four people. They gonna make sure six people get in that section. They yeah. Get in that section. Like they're people here, they gonna make they gonna make sure they get a bang for their buck. Like, and people here are not afraid to tell the DJ, the bartender, or the venue, fuck them, or that they suck. Mm -hmm. People here will go up to whoever's on the side of the stage and be like, "Yo, that's not what I that's not what I want to hear." People will go to the bartender and be like, "This drink is is watered down." Mm -hmm. People will stand outside of a club and be like, yo, I didn't want to get in here anyway. People will do all sorts of things. I think people here, again, it's it's very blue collar. There's nobody above anyone else, or at least mm -hmm. nobody feels that they're above or that anyone else is above them. So yeah. everybody says what they feel and, you know, do what they feel and tries their best to create the environment that they feel the most comfortable to what people would call get free in. Mm -hmm. James said people try to walk in. Night. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Because people here don't expect, like they don't expect the best. They don't. Yeah. They don't. Again, it's, it's very familial to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what, what, how's your experience being a woman in this extremely male, the male dominated space? I think um, I think it's a hard climb because pe it's a lot of people thanking you and loving you behind closed doors mm -hmm. and just passing you up for opportunities in life. Yeah, that makes mm -hmm. sense. It'll be people who you will come you will come through for time and time and time and again, and they will pay you extra for all those different things, but. Or like you know they'll they'll take your ideas all sorts of things and it's not I don't want to sit here and say that they do it maliciously I I kind of just feel like a lot of times 
you know, in in specific situations, I'm an afterthought. Like, mm. oh shit, Sierra. Oh shit, Sierra. Yeah. Um, not so much anymore because I've been around long enough and I don't I don't have the same issues that I had before. Now I think people are like, they've seen me enough, they and enough people trust me enough and my name has been around enough that people are like, all right. Yeah. The respect due, but like Earlier on, not at all. Hmm. Not at all. Do you think it's getting better? Yes. But this is another thing where people are going to be mad that I said this. I think it's getting better for women, but I think less women apply themselves now. Hmm. I don't see I don't see that many of us in here anymore. Like, mm-hmm. I see D making it work. Shout out to D. Obviously, Brittany. Brittany's a fucking... Yes, hey, Brittany. Yes. Brittany's a fucking cannon. Yeah. Um, so, I see Brittany. I see... Um, I see... Uh, honestly, because they don't... Because let me not say that altogether, because there are other things that people do. Like, people do brunches, mm-hmm. poetry slams, and there, there are women, you know what I mean? Or, or right. dance type things there there are women who host those but just like parties part like party events mm-hmm. it's just not it's not that many of us yeah yeah hmm. and even the even the women DJs in nightlife like they're I feel like they don't get the support that they need mm-hmm. and a lot of them don't stick it out long enough to keep trying and that's not all of them but it's it's a lot of them yeah like like, so trying to find you know longevity with the women here has been Mm -hmm. hard you know my best friend Shayna like yeah she was here for forever you know what I mean and she borderline felt like she had to move to LA in order to just get respect here from her peers in Philly and Shayna as a DJ can out DJ a lot of men here, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but it, but you know, again, it's like people. You know what? Let me tell you something that Dice told me a, a long time ago. I remember when I first put out, when I first recorded my first rap song in the Root Studio. He said, "You should re-record it." I said, "Why should I re-record it?" He said, "Um, you're rapping too hard. Like your like your voice is just way too like aggressive." And I was like, "I know because." I'm um, this is an angry song. This is the way I'm going to come off. And he's like, all right, but Sierra, when you do that, you're only going to have women fans. And I was like, oh, Interesting. okay. And he was like, listen, Sierra, he's like, I hate to say it to you. He was like, but there's going to be a thousand and a thousand women who go to, you know, a Nas or a Lil Wayne concert. How many men is going to go to a Nicki Minaj concert? Like, the numbers, as far as, like, the amounts of people that are willing to support one sex versus the other is just, it's just different. And it's that way across the board. So, like, there will be men and women who might go out to see fish, but, like, Hev mm. or Shayna mm-hmm. or Ashley yeah. or, you know what I mean? Like, their, their women friends go and they're who are there who like the party or there are guys who want to date them might show up but right. like, other than that no like they don't I don't I don't feel like in nightlife women get the same support as the men do mm. and I don't feel like the women stick around long enough to change because the thing is even when they do stick around they don't stick with a consistent idea like mm-hmm. When I think about Super Dope, I'm like, Super Dope went on for four years. You know what I mean? Fish Tank went on for six years. Yeah. Like, now Friends and Fam is here, and we're going on six years. Like, these are, like, years. Like, Body Rock years. Same, like, you know what I mean? Just, you know, but women, they they come up with ideas, and they'll be good. But then, like, the, but like their lows for them are just so low, are, are just such low and so consistent, especially, like, in winter months that mm-hmm. they just ditch the concepts altogether. 
Jeez. Mm. So I would like to see. I, so I think that the I think that clubs are getting better. I think that given the state that we're in, as far as like their peer groups, mm-hmm. I feel like you know they're becoming more accepting and supportive of women in the industry. But I feel like unless the audience is going to catch up with them. Mm-hmm. A lot of women get discouraged very um, easily in nightlife. Right. So what's needed to build a better support system for them? I think that um, is is it's a it's a number of things. To be honest, the women it. It's weird because it's on a it's on a case by case situation. Mm-hmm. So, so um, first, I think they need to figure out where their target market is and really go and support their target market and stop trying to be married to the markets that their peers have. Uh, mm-hmm. You That's understand good. what I'm saying? Like, if you are a woman DJ and you like to play, you know, electro or you like to play Spice Girls. Go for that audience. Mm-hmm. Don't try to jump in the audience of somebody, I don't know, and I'm just using this as an example, like, you know, uh, reminisce, you know, mm-hmm. where they play hip-hop, I already. But, like, don't go there and be like, oh, you know what else is 90s? I'm going to play Alanis Morissette. Like, mm-hmm. I would love it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yes. But at the same time, you're going to have a bunch of people there that's like, all right, this is my time to go to the bar. Mm-hmm. where you could legit be like, all right, where are other places and other people? Let me step outside my comfort zone. Let me go to a random bar where they play Alanis Morissette and just let people, or, you know, let me walk into this bar. Let me tell them, like, this is the type of um, set that I would play. Let me let me attempt to play here for free. And yeah. let's, yeah. Just, let's just see how it how it works. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, that way they build their own audience around that. Also, women need to figure out, like, I think being a woman is, there are disadvantages and then there are advantages to it. Mm-hmm. I've been able to build a crowd as a woman because I knew guys wanted to date me. Mm-hmm. I would never date them. And nor nor would I nor would I lead them yes. on. But I know that being friendly and just having a whole bunch of girlfriends and just being willing to talk to people uh-huh. makes people comfortable with going out. Yeah. The fact that I actually dance on the dance floor. Right. Like things like that. Like you should be relatable. Like, you know, and if you care about the culture, these things will not be hard for you. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And there are a lot of women who are extra shy and there are reasons why they're extra shy mm-hmm. but i'm gonna tell you who not shy <laughs> <laughs> these guys right they not shy for shit and some of them can dj and some of them cannot yeah and it don't matter whether they can or can't dj you can't tell them that they not god's gift to philly Snipe. yeah so <laughs> in the same way like they walk walk around with a big stick. Make that shit work. You know, talk to everybody. Be sociable. You know, don't come off like, you know, you you too good to even be there. Yeah. You know, to poke and, or or don't come off like you know you extra shy. Like literally, just like put yourself in there. Like if you're part of the culture, be part of the culture. Yeah. So, um, how did that lead to your transition into being a rapper? All right, so look. <laughs> this thing. <clears throat> Truth be told, I've been a rapper. I just I just didn't put out music. Like when I was when I was in college, even when I was doing the uh parties and stuff with damage, I used to mm-hmm. rap, right? But I would just join the ciphers that was on Temple campus and everybody uh-huh be like, all right, all right, this is Sierra joking around. Mm-hmm. Um, then I told my girlfriends at Urban Outfitters, I was like, y'all, I'm going to be a rapper. And at the time, again, they also thought I was joking, but they used to have parties at Fluid, right? They used to have Mad Decent Mondays at Fluid. And then they used to have uh, a Taste of Fluid. Mm-hmm. 
And what I would do is post up at the um, restaurant, the latest dish right next door. Yeah. And I would battle everybody, battle rap everybody that came in because Tiffany worked there. So she had the aux cord. Uh -huh. She would throw on beats. And I would legit sit next to everybody at the bar knowing that I'm the only person that tries to rap. Yeah. And I would be like, you trying to battle? I'll buy you a drink. You trying to battle? And I would just continue to do that until I felt confident enough to actually rap. Hey, JJ. Hey, hey JJ. JJ. Um, so I did that for a while. And then I got to host to host Mad Decent Mondays. That was back when my Philly girl voice was extra high pitched. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, hey, everybody, thank you for coming to Mad Decent Mondays. And people be like, oh, my God, not on the mic. Um, but, yeah, I think... Um, yeah, I was I was definitely a rapper first. I just wasn't like mm -hmm. publicly with that. So I mean, I connect to your music, and I think a lot of your your fans connect to your music, as, uh, especially the ones in Philadelphia, because it seems like you talk about the day here in Philly, which for many is non-existent <laughs> or piss poor. Um, right. So was that like how did you like do you do you do you agree with that statement or like what do you feel about that? I agree with that statement wholeheartedly. Um the one thing that I noticed during the uh COVID is that people people get active based upon certain emotions. Yes. And I get active off anger. Mm. So like if I'm if I'm really if I'm really like in order for me to be creative when I'm not, like, I feel like I got Mary J. Blige syndrome. In order for me to create, well, I have to be extremely happy, like, extremely happy. Mm -hmm. I gotta be mad as shit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, like, I have disc yeah. records for a bunch of people that I ain't never put out. <laughs> but, but I got bars for for individuals. I want to hear them on on all different levels. Send like, me that some, privately. I want I want I want the juice. Listen, I got I have diss tracks like so like those are the, so that's what usually um inspires me to write and relation and in relationships for me the they end up being the most disappointing because when I date people I feel like I I feel like I start dating and I'm all in. Yeah. Like, and I'm all in and I give you so much of myself up front. Like I feel like I am a very I'm a I'm a very I'm an open book. You know what I mean? Even to my detriment. I was talking to somebody the other day and he was like, "Why do women lie about their sex partner or or the, their their number?" Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, "I don't know why cuz I don't." And he was like, <laughs> And he was like, for real? I was like, yeah. I was like, I had an ex, which is true. I was like, I had an ex in college who didn't talk to me for two weeks because he asked me what my body count was, and I told him. And he was mad about it. And I was like, OK, so what? You want to break up? Like, what's wrong? <laughs> and he was like, and, and he laughed about it. But like, that's just who I am as a person. And and, and I do that. Um, I do that to protect myself because I'm like, if I'm open with you in the beginning, there's anybody can say to you or tell you that I haven't already told you. There's yeah. nothing that pop up. So I feel like if you're with me after this, you really fuck with me. Like you gotta, like you gotta love me for that. Yeah. So when situations happen and I'm thinking like we're on the same page, if people don't reciprocate that, I just take it so hard. Like yeah. I just take it so hard. And, and it's not like, and I'm not sad. I'm like, for real mad like uh -huh. like I'm mad and I and I take it as a level of disrespect and so back in the day as Matt can tell you back in the day when I felt like an ex disrespected me I punched that nigga in his face <laughs> where to God and he's seen me do it a fil I, have, a Philly girl. I, I have not I have knocked out teeth he has to, like like and I'm not condoning I'm not condoning relationship violence. So let me not say that domestic violence is terrible. But what I'm saying is that I feel like when people when you are very nice to people all the time and you do so much for people, a lot of times they feel like they can disrespect you on every level. And I feel like men who are especially sexist men rely on their brute. So they 
they feel like I talk to you recklessly and blah, 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 whatever. And my thing is this, I got eight brothers. Mm. So you won't talk to me if like, if you in my face, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna be like, yo, get out my face. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you some time. But Sierra back then, <laughs> fucking wild card. Wild card. You and up here Philly girls always in a fight. Yo, but to, but to be honest, I didn't like myself doing that because I was embarrassed. Nobody mm. should ever get you to that point. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like me punching an ex in the face is a release in the moment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, you know, to be about women empowerment and and be and we're in this day and age where you're winning when you care the least. Mm. Also, mm -hmm. so the whole thing is just like shit like that was just too embarrassing. So after a while, I had friends who told me that I had anger management issues. Mm. Mm -hmm. And at the time I didn't see it. I was like, what what are you talking about? I don't have anger management issues, but come to find out, I kind of did. Mm -hmm. And so I had to figure out better ways to release anger. Mm -hmm. And I would, I, you know, I went to school for journalism. I was a writer anyway. So I was like, all right. And then I just started to put it in the music and it just became a better release for me. And it allowed me to talk shit in a public platform. And you know what's about you, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> And, 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 and some and of us know that too. Us. That's the great part. Some of no. us know too. Yeah, and everybody that knows us knows right. about you too, nigga. Yeah. So what's up? Mm -hmm. Love it. Love the energy. You know, so and I'm about to make some money off of this. <laughs> <laughs> Someone asked, "Are you understandable why your uh, your ex felt the way you did because of your answer?" Am I understanding why my ex felt the way that he did? Regarding the count. He asked you about your count. <laughs> to be honest, no. Mm. And I'm going to say again, like, I understand, like, I can't say that I understand it because that's like me saying that I understand sexism and to understand sexism is to understand idiocracy. Yes. I get that people have it. Yeah. I don't understand and why people have it and I damn sure don't understand why somebody who has that would date me yeah you know what I mean like mm -hmm. you like you knew the type of person that I was before you dated me to be honest and this is again I'm an open book to be honest the way we started dating was because Obama just won the presidency he was <laughs> in my class I just finished drinking, and I was just like, yo, Obama just won the fucking presidency. What are you trying to do? <laughs> like, what are you, like, what do you want to do right now? Because my, like, what do you want to do? And he came back with me. So if you, you, knew, you knew how you met me, bro. Like, you knew. You knew who I was. I never faked for you. I never faked for nobody. So at the end of the day, you coming to me with that tr question is trash. I can yeah. understand if I met you, you know what I mean, in a church and you had, and you, you know what I mean? And, and, and you had these expectations that I was about to be the PK's new preacher's wife. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I was putting on airs, but this is how I was when you met me, bro. So now you mad that I didn't lie to you. Right. You got the, fear. You got the wrong, you like, you no, no, sir. No. And, and you should never ask the question that you wasn't ready for the answer. Yeah. So, cause so the same person asked if you asked him and he gave you the answer you did, would you be mad? Hell no. <laughs> no. My thing is this. Did you wear a condom? Are you reckless? Okay. Did you wear a condom and are you reckless? Right. Now, if you're trying to tell me that you're a sex addict, then yes, I need to know that. To know that. Yeah. But other than that, what that got to do with me? <laughs> <laughs> Like, I don't care. Like, the fuck? Yeah. So, so let's bring it back to your music. Um, so, Philly and f relationships in Philly inspire, inspire your content, meaning like your lyrics. Right. But your sound is very house. So how did you develop, you know, that, that, that you know, that love for that, for that music? Ooh, well, 
you know, like most people, and, or like like most young black kids, mm -hmm. Sundays Sundays is cleaning days. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Sundays was the days that your mom filled the bucket of water with Lysol and some paper towels, and you was to clean the bathroom or wash the walls. <laughs> and so for my mother, those times would be for Motown and mm -hmm. house music. Oh, nice. So, like, we could listen to some C.C. Penison. Yeah. You know what I mean? While, you know, just just really, you know, I, and, and, and the more and the more that I thought about when I was younger, house music really played the background to my life. You know, mm -hmm. Kayla T, Forgive Me Body is like my, is, is yes. my favorite, you know. And then, you know, what the LGBTQ community has done with house music mm -hmm. is they've just given it so much life. Yeah. It's With it just being so large, I just feel like it fits my personality. You yeah. know what I mean? It's something that I felt free with, and I can dance, and I can be myself, and still talk shit. Mm -hmm. So that's that. And then I, my first my first track happened to come out the same time as Azalea Banks came out. Wow. All right. So, and that was the year that I had performed at Firefly. Oh, okay. And when I performed at Firefly, she happened to headline Firefly that year. Uh huh. It's Kendrick Lamar. Uh huh. And when I, <laughs> I went on before, I went on at a different stage, and I went on before her. But when I went on, it was a bunch of people from other managers that was just like, "Yo, yo, like this must be like a new wave because you know Azalea Banks sounds just like she raps over this type of stuff too." So I was like, damn, I got to check my shit out. And I knew at the time my girlfriend, Ebony and Jeanette, listened to her. Uh-huh. And I was like, let me get, let me get, let me listen to some uh, 1991. Let me, let me see. Classic. Yeah. Right. And then, and I instantly fell in love with it because she's quoting Paris is Burning. And yeah. you know, I fucking love Paris is Burning. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, I really fuck with what she's doing. But then at the same time, I'm like, well, let me make sure that we're not the same. Like, yeah, same. I, I don't want to. I don't want us to be the same. Mm -hmm. And so, but what I realized what makes me different is that I'm still a Philly girl at heart. It don't matter what beat you put behind me, my lyrics still going to have my Philly girl accent. Yeah, about my fucking life. You know what I mean? Where I feel like a lot of her things, like. A lot of her lyrics are like fun and party driven. And my thing is mine can be fun and party driven, but what makes it fun and party driven usually is the beat. It's not yeah. usually the content. The content mm -hmm. is usually right. aggressive. Yeah. Yeah. Um so and I think that I think that, that is what makes my music relatable to people here in Philly, even though I do house music because Unless I'm legit, like I said, it, with the exclusion of the LGBTQ community and the exclusion of other people who are DJs who do music, a lot of people in Philly are not listening to house music like that. Yeah, that's that's fair. Um, and Which then, is crazy to me because there's such a huge house community here, but it's not something that a lot of people know about. Exactly. And then, um, and then like, after that, going to go see Lady Alma really changed my life changed my life because she's like the goat of stage presence right yes you know what i mean like she like if something isn't right on stage she's not like oh let me try to make she's like she'll sing that's right. not right you know what mm -hmm. i mean she'll like she commands an audience in such a way um yeah and i and i and i would see her shows and i'd be like I cannot wait till I am like you. Like I, like I want to be able to come to, to command a crowd like you. And she was like, "No, you don't. You want to command a crowd like you." Mm -hmm. And I was like, "I guess." Uh huh. She was the person who actually made me want to dig more into house. Um, and, uh, you know, quick story. She invited me to actually. You know, it wasn't her. It was Chris Burrell. 
um, okay. the DJ Christopher, who, uh, for those who don't know, is an also an awesome DJ. Right. Um, he invited me. He was doing a radio show outside, outside of, um, outside of, oh, excuse me, at Drexel. And um, I get there, and I'm like, oh, Lee Alma's here. Um, and I didn't know that she was like the host of the show. But and she had her friend Miss Tangie. Hey, Miss Tangie. Tangie, um, yes. Yes, and she, I was looking at how the music transformed Tangie, which was the only place I've seen that do something to someone was church. You know what I mean? Like it was so it made me. I was, I was just utterly fascinated, and then I understood why and how it gets people so uh, so spiritually filled. Exactly. And the thing about the thing that I love from a feminist perspective about Tangi, about Alma, about mm -hmm. Ursula, mm -hmm. is that they're so peace and love, but they will curse you the fuck out. <laughs> That's and that's what I love about them. So, like, I love that about them mm -hmm. because because they're not going to bullshit you. Yeah. You know what I mean? If something ain't it, it ain't it. You know, and they're not telling you that to be haters. They're telling you that because they want you to be better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and, they, and they expect things to be a specific way, and they, and they enjoy quality. Yes. And, you know, and they present and put out quality. Mm-hmm. You know, and they're also true artists. Yeah. And I think true artists are not trying to put on airs. Yeah. They're like, if you came to see, you came to see me as me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's another thing, again, like, so that's what made me decide to rap over House Beats. It's just a combination of things. And then, uh, of course, you learn that there's not a lot of people who do people who do it. So you get excited because you're kind of building a lane. Yeah, yeah. Well, we do have about twelve minutes left before in before Instagram kicks us off. Uh, mm -hmm. For those who are tuning in, we this is very much so a, a neighborhood chat. So if you have any questions for Queen Joe. Feel free to send them along. Feel free to send your questions along. Um, yes, but um, until then, um, speaking of music, I just released a bomb ass visual uh, for your new song. Tell the folks about it. Um, so, Lost in Powers is okay. So, for Women's History Month, every year before. I would try to get with Jeanette and Rachel to do Pussy Claps Back. Yes, love them if they're on. Hi guys. Yeah. For to do Pussy Claps Back, and we would try to do something to put on, you know, women showcases to support women in the arts. Mm -hmm. And the first year, I think, ended up getting like twenty five hundred dollars to give to Planned Parenthood, nice. and it was when Donald Trump first became president. Mm -hmm. Um, but like we just try to raise money for things every year. But this particular year, with COVID nineteen happening, a whole bunch of things just didn't happen. And I find like every Women's History Month, I have to, I have to figure out a way to like support some women's initiative. Mm -hmm. uh, so the verses that I had in that song, in that song, were uh, there. It was, it, it's interesting because it's about sex, but then it's not. Yeah. Like it's about sex, but it's just like, it's it's showing that I'm a sexual person, but just because I'm a sexual person doesn't mean that we're going to have sex. Like, it's, right. Um, and the sample had Diana on it, which I love because, Damn. you know, Diana Ross was one of the first women who was like, uh-uh, I need equal pay in this industry. Mm -hmm. Cut me my coins. You know what I mean? So I felt like that was a bomb sample to have. The guy who produced the track is um, from South Africa, which was wow. like, yeah, we met each other on YouTube. Nice. Yeah, and connected on Instagram, which was dope. And he was, and when I told him what I wanted to do, he was like, all right, I'll give you the beat. Just send me $10 for, I forgot what it was, but for some processing thing. He said, wow. send me $10. So it would work perfect for me because I didn't have to spend any money when I went to go record the when I went to go record the project again I didn't have to spend any money because I ended up doing a free track for someone else so they gave me free 
studio time. Nice. So that was free. And then when it came to the video, shout out to the Losers Club. Um, they were they're just start just starting out. They were just starting out their uh, production company. Uh -huh. And I have seen Simone around so many times. You know that's Matt's girlfriend, and she yeah. was just like, "Let me hear, let me hear the vision for it." And when I told her, she was like, "I would love to do it." And um, same thing. So like. When you have people support you like that, you have to do, like, you know what I mean? You have to put that same support out there. So I was like, all right, cool. Now I'm going to record this and I'm going to do it where it's, the track is free. It's a, free, it's a free download, but it encourages you to donate. Yeah. All the donation goes to BW Gives, which is Black Women Gives. Nice. Which is an organization that helps fund uh, underprivileged startups for people. Very who, nice. Which I thought would be great since you know we're in COVID-19 and a lot of businesses are falling and yeah yeah I'll put some money back where it should be where it belongs instead of the 80 percent from them twelve hundred dollar checks uh -oh. going to the rich and the uh -oh. others but I mean we already knew that in the now in the words of Ro James right <laughs> we knew that was gonna happen right 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 but yeah that's it as far as that track is concerned so uh -huh. yes guys if you have not seen my video make sure you go see my video it's on IGTV. it's called lost in powers it is influenced by austin powers the austin powers and diana ross Check it out. <laughs> so are you working on any new music because what's that looking like all right so i was working on this project called his ex-girlfriend yes I already said it was juicy um and i have a couple tracks completed from that but when i was uh with black thought for the master class he's been really challenging me lately and like i'm a little, like it's so funny too because he's like he like he like plays big brother like he'll like i'll put out like a freestyle and he'll be like that was cool but this is a topic that you're used to why don't you do something that you that people don't expect mm. or he'll be like I feel like you could have fixed your breath control in that part right there or <laughs> like he's just super critical of me and I'm not to that I love it though I, I wish I wish that when I first started I had somebody in music in my corner that really pushed me you know what I mean like there are people who support me but there are not a lot of people who push me yeah um so he's like and he's been like if you read to do something completely different, I will, like, I will support you. Like, send me your tracks. I will tell you, like, I will tell you. Nice. Like, and, and, like, just really create that dialogue back and forth. So I, having that as a, as a, as an ace in the hole really encouraged me to be like, all right, yes, I'm still going to put out his ex-girlfriend, but let me think larger. And then mm -hmm. I was on the phone with Taib the other day, and he was like, you know, Sierra, I really like your um, freestyle for the Jada Kiss joint. Mm -hmm. uh, we just started talking about, like, sexism in the industry and yeah. different people and different things, and he was just like, you know what would be a good idea? And I was like, what? And then he told me the idea, and I was like, that is a good idea. And he mm -hmm. was like, no, you should really do it. So I was like, all right. And then I uh, went to bed that night and go crazy. Like, shit like that is like God sent because I went to bed that night. Let's say I went to bed at 11 o'clock and at 1130, like, I woke up and just wrote like three songs, mm -hmm. like nonstop with that concept. Like, I feel like God woke me up on my sleep and was just like, bitch, this is what we've been waiting for. Yes. You know, especially because in the beginning of COVID, I really, I, I didn't feel creative. Mm -hmm. So I usually feel, like I said, me, I get creative when I'm really happy or I'm really angry. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't really angry. I was bummed, but I wasn't, there was nothing to make me really angry, nothing to make me really happy. And I couldn't, I couldn't even write through the thought or the process of someone else because I couldn't see someone else. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I just, I just didn't get that inspiration. So yeah, in the middle of the night that happened and I was like, mm, let's go. <laughs> so, I'm happy about that. Yeah. Well, I'm happy about it too. We're looking forward to 
to hearing that, of course. Now, That's tell the folks how they can stay abreast of you. Well, you guys can stay abreast of me by following me on Instagram at Queen Joe Music. Uh, yeah, you can listen to my music on Spotify. Although I prefer you listen to my music on Bandcamp, I actually put more on Bandcamp than I do on Spotify. And Or you can listen to me on SoundCloud. Or you hit me up in my DMs or my comments. Well, let me not. You can... <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, you're going to have new music coming from the DMs. But yeah, I'm like, I I'm a, I talk a lot. So I'm I'm easy to get in touch with. You, mm -hmm. look so you can find me. Yeah. Find me. What time is it, by the way? It is almost 9 o'clock, girl. We was just doing some, you know, some girl talk. It went by quick, it right? Definitely, it definitely did. And I'm going to tell you, though. Let me tell you, I love you because uh, when I uh, saw that I was going on at 8 o'clock, I was like, damn, I'm a Miss Bino show. I know. And I wanted to see Bino because I wanted to see him with the cutout shirt on. Oh, right. Listen, I know. I was like, I, I was like um, so you going to wear that uh, muscle shirt? <laughs> like, here, you're going to get out of here. I was like, I just wanted to know. A mess. I just wanted to know. A mess. But yeah, so folks, if, you know, when you, when we, Go to, get off here, go over to Bino if he's still on. Uh, we got to support our own at this time. And yes. Speaking of supporting our own, we will be uh, talking to folks every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 8 o'clock. Let's go, Ev. Can I, can, mm. I, can, I, can I make a um, can, can, I, can I make a suggestion? Yes. When you are done with your lineup, can I interview you? Oh, sure. Like for your finale? Sure. I mean, you know, the thing is, I don't know when the finale is because, I mean, Lord knows how long we're going to be in this house. I know. But, 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 but we will know, like, every two weeks at a time. That's true. Yeah. So, like... Or we could just do an interview. I don't mind. Yeah, like, I want to, like, I want to interview you. Ooh. Ugh. You know I've lived, honey. <laughs> I'm just learned. saying, you know, I went to school for journalism. I know how to do it. Yeah, I mean, I, I would love that. You know, let's, let's set that up. All right. Well, you can give me for the dates for the people that you already have to make sure that I like that. You know, yeah. I know in a, in ahead of time. And or we, it doesn't have to be on a on a on a you know Monday. It could be on whatever day. It could yeah. be on Tuesday. It could be whatever. But like, I'm interested. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Yeah. So while we set that up, I do want to do a, a shameless plug. Next week, uh, we have Eric Roberson on Monday. Yes. Wednesday, yeah. Wednesday, we have Lauren Talese. Yes. And Friday, we have our mutual friend, Rebel Foster. So it's going to be a really yes. good yeah. Let me tell you something about freaking, um, you know, when he was in the, uh, what's his name? Uh, Eric Roberson. Yeah. 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 You don't remember when he was in that group, Zoe? Who you talking about, Eric or Rebel? I'm talking about Eric. No, uh, but, um, with Fonte and them. I don't remember who was in it, but he he was in that group, Zoe, and they had a music video at Voyeur, and I'm in it. I was a video girl in that. Oh, okay. So we're going to add that to the interview questions. No, he don't remember who I am. I don't know him like that. I just know I'm in his video. <laughs> also, also, but that's not his only video that I was in. I'm in another video um, as a video girl in there too, and it was one that um, it was one that headshot. But yes, look at me. Damn it, we didn't ask you about being a video girl. God damn it! Oh, it's <laughs> about being a video girl. <laughs> All right, but we about to be listen. We'll talk about that offline. All right, see y'all, sure. everyone, on Monday.